Alan S. says, I just wanted to say thank you for all the content throughout these hard times. I've been struggling mentally and physically and your videos really help. Alan, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I think we've all been struggling mentally. Uh, thank you. It's the reason that we're doing it. I mean, we're keeping the lights on and we're staying employed and that is great. But frankly, all of us like look at the comments and the reactions to what we're doing and we're all really uh, invigorated by the response from you guys. Uh, I watched Contact last week with Jodie Foster and William Fickner and Tom Skerritt, Jake Busey. It's great. It's hammy. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's a, it's like a, you know, yeah, there'll, there will be Robert Zemeckis retrospectives and there are some, some of his films I, I can't watch again. And many of his films I've watched many, 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 many times because they're so great. And Contact is one I've seen a bunch. And there's this great bit in Contact, spoilers, uh, when she does meet the aliens and they've shown up to her in the form of her dad because they've kind of read her mind and given her a, someone to talk to she'd be comfortable with. And she said, how did I get here? Did you build the way that I got here? And he said, no. Those pathways were built long before we got here, and we don't know who built them. There's so much we don't know. This is an intelligent alien race that has sent this message to Earth to have them build this thing. And he says, there's so much we don't know. And in all this time, we've been looking around. The only thing we have found is each other. And I, I, like, I burst into tears watching the movie at that, because that's right. And... You know, I, I'm, I'm scared about the world. The list of ways in which things aren't great is long. It's a big list. It's kicking my ass. We're very upset about it in my house and among my friends and my family and my colleagues. And we want to make the world a better place. And it's very strange having all of culture all of the movies and the theaters and the music and the restaurants and all of that stuff just sort of not there. I know you might live in a place in the country where it's less locked down, but for the most part, a huge portion of the world is locked down. And I redound to that same thing. The only thing we have is each other. So Alan, I thank you for that. Um, because I get a lot out of this process too. Uh, if I didn't have something to do every day, I would be going totally insane. This shop is, is my solace, my succor, my balm. Um, Fiona Lieberman says, it's fun to see your latest tools and toys, but I imagine the cave isn't actually limitless. Are there decisions you've made about prioritizing your physical or cognitive space? Oh yeah, totally. There's all sorts of tools in this place that I don't have. There's all sort of tool, there, there are many tools that I don't have, even though I would like to have access to them. Um, but I have to be very rigorous about what I bring in because yeah, not only is this space not limitless, but it's not very large. I mean, a lot of people walk in and they're like, this is it. It's like, it's, it's maybe 16 feet this way and 30 feet this way. It's not humongous. Um, so yeah, I would love every now and then I go on Craigslist and I covet surface grinders because my machining has gotten good enough that my machining has progressed enough where I think bringing things that last surface ground uh, 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 little sliver is is maybe a place I'll go. And sometimes on Craigslist, you can find a surface grinder for like a really good deal, but I don't know where the hell it's going to go in here. Um, the more I do carpentry, the more I think, uh, you know, a joiner might be a good tool, but I don't have room for it right now. Uh, my dream is to have a shop big enough that I can drive my Land Cruiser in and work on it indoors. I will keep saying that dream until it comes true. Um, yeah, and recently I have had, in terms of hard decisions prioritizing the work, I have come to a real realization about this space that my shop is in, this building. Um, and I've started to get rid of tons and tons and tons of crap. Um, I have this loft upstairs, which we recently shot a show and tell of, so that we finally get to see what's going on up in that hell space. 
but I've made a real prioritization decision about what belongs up there. And it's not stuff that I need to store. It's stuff that I need to use. So the loft has become entirely material storage, which is a fantastic shift for me because it means I don't have to have all the materials down here because there's not enough room. Um, one of the needs that came up for that is because I have now so I've done so many fabric and leather projects. I have a really great collection of leathers and fabrics. Uh, I mean, all sorts of stuff that supports that buckles and findings and zippers and stuff. And there's just not enough room down here. Now I have a whole like 20 foot long wall of shelves for all my fabric. And you'll get to see it in the show and tell. Yeah. Uh, there's nobody that doesn't, uh, there is almost nobody that doesn't have to make, you know, those hard decisions. Um, Darren Lewis says, I know you've talked a bit about this, but what constraints of the lockdown, what, co what constraints of the lockdown have led to interesting outcomes? Oh my God. I mean, the most interesting early outcome for me was how beautiful and haunting a city is when it's practically empty or feels totally empty. And like, I guess three weeks into the lockdown in early April, <clears throat> um, an Italian restaurant in Hayes Valley that we like opened up for takeout and we went down there and it was Hayes Valley at eight o'clock on a Friday night. And there was like, two, you could see two other people on the whole street. It was far out. Um, there's a great book from a few years ago called The World Without Us. And it investigates the ways in which nature and geological processes would change the world at once hum if humans disappeared. And he looks at several places, the DMZ or Chernobyl or other places in which war has emptied out cities <clears throat> to get examples of what that's like. And there's always this haunting quality to be in a place that people built and used and that they are not in. And in the first like two months of the lockdown here in San Francisco, it was both haunting and it was also really beautiful. Uh, yeah. Um, another interesting outcome. Um, we have fallen back in love with Golden Gate Park, one of the greatest public parks in the entire world, man. Uh, we go there almost daily and take Maggie. Um, uh, yeah, we have a few meadows and pathways we like in Golden Gate Park. Um, it has an endless, Golden Gate Park is seemingly endless. Like it is, it, it's a tesseract, man. It, once you enter it, you think you can look at a map and sort of see where everything was. And I've been going there for 30 years. And about three weeks ago, we discovered the casting pools where you can practice fly casting. I didn't know that existed there. Literally, we walked in and we were like, what? who was hiding this the whole time? I have since found out that they empty out those casting pools once per year to clean them. And apparently skateboarders freaking totally dig that week because they can skate in those pools. I like that. Mm. Besides that, professionally, the lockdown has been nothing but interesting outcomes. I didn't. When the lockdown first happened, I thought, am I going to be allowed to leave my house to go the three blocks to the cave? And then, of course, yeah, I was. And then it was like, what do we do? I mean, the norm set up a camera in the corner with a microphone. And I think I set it up and tried to shoot something. And I was like, this, don't feel like this is no good. And then I picked up my phone and I started shooting and was like, well, this is much better. And these guys were like, OK, put, here's some settings to choose. So it makes our editing easier. Um, and I didn't, I mean, just to, again, to some perspective, I built this shop in 2000, late 2010. That's when I first moved in here. And I was in production on Mythbusters for another five years through the end of 2015. And in that time, Mythbusters was a full-time job. We shot 40 weeks a year, took two weeks off. Usually when we took those two, we, we shot 40 weeks a year. We shot for three month blocks and then we took two weeks off, three months, two weeks. And for those two weeks, we usually hightailed it out of town to get some rest and relaxation. And for those five years, I had this space while making Mythbusters. I got to spend maybe between one and five hours a week total in this shop, one hour a week in here. And still we were able to get some tested videos done. First one day build was shot back around that time. Um, 
And now I'm in here 40 to 50 hours a week. Uh, it, it feels like a like an impossible luxury to get to spend so much time in here. And sometimes I am overwhelmed by possibilities. I pulled an old costume out yesterday because I felt like working without filming something. So I thought, eh, let me pull out Iron Man Mark I and see if I can't make that piece, that, that costume better. I've never worn it at a con. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can adjust it. Um, Manuel Criado asks, do you have a story about the hat that you have on? Um, this is one of the, <clears throat> I have very particular sartorial ideas about the way men should dress. I know it doesn't seem like I'm the kind of person that would have those ideas, but, but I do. I, I like dressing in a particular way. I, dress in a particular way when I go out. I have a uniform on a daily, sorry, you stay right there. No. I have a uniform on a daily basis, which is blue jeans and sneakers or blundstones and a t-shirt. Um, and in general, I think that when I see a lot of men in baseball caps, they look like boys. They look like young boys. And I, I just have an inherent difficulty with that. I, they can dress however they want. I'm not judging anybody. I just don't think that works for me. And I have some other baseball caps. And when I put those baseball caps, I, I look like a boy. And when I put this one on, I feel like I don't. And you may think I do. That's fine. I just feel like this hat sort of fits me, fits my personality. And by the way, I have like the most intense COVID hair. Um, yeah, look at this. Look at that. And I ran, I ran so far away. I just ran. Yeah, so I'm covering over my COVID hair. Oh my God, I look like Wave. <laughs> Wave, I say that with love. You've got the greatest COVID hair, man. Um, I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. It's been a long time coming, man. I can't stand it when it gets all puffy here and I start looking like... Gary Oldman's Dracula without it actually being Gary Oldman. <laughs> hey everyone, Adam Savage here in my cave. And we are living through a completely strange moment in time. Six months ago, the entire world changed. Everyone went into lockdown and so did Tested. We became a virtual workplace almost overnight. And now I see all my colleagues almost exclusively on video chat. Um, I am shooting only on the phone. I know the sound quality has gotten worse. Norm, Joey, and Gunther are all editing from home. And maybe the biggest change is output. We have radically increased the number of videos that we make because, well, that's what I'm doing all week long here is just shooting everything on my phone. And eventually the world will return to normal, but one of the things we wanna keep up is the pace of videos that we've been releasing. We've been ecstatic about your feedback about this and we wanna keep it going, but in order to, we need to ask for your direct support. And so I'm here today to announce Tested Channel Membership. If you're not interested in becoming a member, that's fine. Tested is not going to change for you. You'll still get all the same great one-day builds, tool tips, the podcast, et cetera. But if you are willing to join, we've got some pretty cool extras and two levels at which to join. For $1.99 a month, we have our supporter level. And for $9.99 a month, our patron level, which includes all the stuff from the supporter level and some live streams, some direct access to me and the tested team, and some sneak peeks into our entire tested workflow and process. We are so excited about the new possibilities that channel membership opens up. And we know that many of you have been supporting us all along as tested premium members. And to you, I say thank you. Your support has meant everything. And you can keep it going by hitting our brand new join button somewhere on this screen. Thank you guys for watching. And between you and me, I am most excited by the live streams. I really loved doing those earlier this summer and I can't wait to pick it up again.